Running it, but. All right, better late than never, right? So, you say. so I say, I mean, it makes me feel better that way, right? Well, that's good. We, uh, we didn't get very far in Romans chapter 12 anyway, so we only have most of the chapter left. So we are in Romans chapter 12 this morning. We have been studying through this book, and we're really getting uh, into the meat of it here, aren't we? And correct me if I'm wrong, but we read a little more than this last week, but I think really all we talked about, all we talked through, is about through verse 3. And I think we kind of left off on verse 3, because we spent a lot of time talking about these spiritual worship, our discernment, we spent a long time talking about those two topics mainly, and so we had good discussion. Um... But does anybody remember three onward? That's where I'm going to pick up, I think. Okay, that's where we're going to go then. So we're going to be picking up in Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Does anybody have any last-minute comments on the first couple of verses or a little bit of chapter 11 that we didn't get to talk about? Okay, perfect. So if you remember, Paul is still talking to the church in Rome about accepting people from these different ways of life. That's the Gentiles, right? We talked about the branches being grafted in. And then we talked about how it's our discernment, about judging a little bit, and how we need to be living our lives as spiritual worship. So these are all tying in together. And I think these gifts that we're going to be talking about next also tie in together. So let's go ahead and pick up in Romans 12, 3, and I think they all work together. So let's read Read Romans 12, 3 through 8 for this first section. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. And the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, to the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in his generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy, does it with cheerfulness. Let's go ahead and stop there for just a second. This is a theme we see Paul writing about um, again, kind of over and over, kind of a common theme of there's multiple parts to the body. So what's Paul saying to the church right here? Don't be people. Don't be people? <laughs> Don't be worldly. Okay. Be more Christ-like is what he's saying. Be more Christ-like in, in how? Well, you, human, uh, us humans, have a tendency to think of ourselves better than others a little bit. You know, uh, the, the Hebrews had that. 
You know, they thought they were the people in Rome, nobody else counted. You know, that's a that's a that's a normal trait for humans. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, that's, that's not Christ. Christ taught us. All right. So connecting these two, Paul writes. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. And then he goes on and talks about gifts, right? So I think these two are connected. And, and like Craig's saying here, common human problem, like Larry's saying, is we continually get stuck on this, my gift is most important. Or maybe it's not even my gift that we get stuck on, but we pick one certain trait of our lives or our worship. We just read there the same thing that is most important. And we can project that on other people too. So you can say, I'm more highly thought of than I ought to be, but also you are, because I like your trait too. Mm -hmm. But what's Paul saying about these different gifts? Courtney. That they're all important. Okay. It makes me think, um, during the tea party, who Sherry taught, she um, related the, the story. It was called, Old to the Ode to the Bible. <laughs> and it was talking about all the different body parts were saying, I'm most important. No, I'm most important. And so <laughs> the butthole just stopped working. <laughs> and things were bad in a hurry. And so they all agreed, we're all important. Interesting. <laughs> Ladies' tea party was a little different than I thought it was. <laughs> See what you missed? Yeah. yeah. I tell you what, when I edited that video, I should have watched all of the uh, lessons, I guess, <laughs> instead of just scrubbing through them. Whew. And you're also telling me I can go find a video clip of Miss Sherry Sherry saying Buckle? Yes. All right, great. <laughs> Larry. It's interesting that Paul thought that this needed to be said. Mm -hmm. Because obviously there were members thinking they were better than other members. So let's kind of put it back into the context we're at here, right? We just talked about the Jews and the Gentiles, right? And the, very soon thereafter, we're talking about some of you think you're more important than others. It's almost like this is the same conversation continued, just you still have the same attitude problem. It's here, and it's here, and it's still here. That's what Paul's saying, right? And so even if they were to accept the Gentile, they were allowing the branch to be grafted in. Reading between the lines a little bit here is what Larry was saying. Still seems like they're having some of these pride problems. Craig. Dude, it shows up in Corinthians and uh, where else was it where the rich man comes in and says, sit down in the seat of respect and, and this poor man sitting at my feet, you know. Uh, the Corinthians were, were, were going, I, I believe it was the tithe of the affluent was probably coming in and, 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 and eating everything else and leaving, leaving the, 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 the humble, the, the lower, lower people out altogether, you mm. know. Uh, it's, a, it's a human trait that, ju that, that, that is timeless, you know, and it's, it's, not, it's not just out there, it's in here, you know, you find that stuff, you know, I give so much to the church, you know, what do you do? Mm. You know, I do this much for the church, what do you do? You know, you know what, what, do you, what do you have to, why do you stand before me and talk to me like that when I do this, all this stuff for the church? Mm. Well, that's, that's what the deal is, but it's human, it's human, it's as a human can be. It's a terribly sad and destructive human trait, because I'm going to take it beyond the church walls even. He's talking to the church here, but this is what humans do outside, right? Well, I do more for the community than you do, yeah. just because I like the thing that I do for the community, right? Terry? I think what he's trying to teach us here is real fellowship. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and keep that thought, too, because we're going to be in Corinthians this, uh, for the sermon, as, as Craig was saying. This is a reoccurring topic, so we're going to be coming. Uh, Gloria and I were going to Safeways one time, and a guy walked out as a, as a Native American couple, old guy, mm -hmm. you know, pretty, pretty depleted, and fell down and was foaming his mouth and everything else, and uh, nobody was doing anything, so I was like, okay, you know. I would do it, I would have done it, but I did not want to do it. 
you know, the best thing I ever heard was the amb ambulance sirens in the back of the <laughs> You're like, oh, home. thank you. <laughs> but, you know, uh, even though I was willing to do, do CPR behind you, I did not, mm. did not want to do that. And that's the problem. You know, here's another human being, you know. But that wasn't what I was looking at, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Nancy. Mm -hmm. So just do the church part to do your service and, and know it's to God. Absolutely. That's a reiteration of, one of probably my favorite verse, Colossians 3.23. Whatever you do, whatever work you do, do it as if you're serving Lord, not man. So I, I think I, I want to just touch on one more thing before we move on here too. He goes through and he talks about the gifts given to us. And he goes on and kind of lifts some out, right? And he says, in service, proportion to our faith. If in service, it's in how we serve, and it's teaching and teaching, extortion, and it, and it, the one who extorts in his extortion, and his generosity, the one who contributes generously. Exhortation. Exhortation. It's like extortion. Extortion. Get out of here. All right. So my point with this is, what's he saying with... Yeah. What, are they, what is he saying with this gift? What do you do? You do it to your fullest. Do it to your fullest in what you're doing. Yeah. So that's, I think we can apply that today too because sometimes we do it to the fullest for what they're wanting. Or we do it to the fullest to fit that. But what Paul is saying right here is do it to the fullest on your gift. Mm -hmm. So serve, serve, teach, teach, encourage, encourage, contributing generously, <coughs> leadership, diligently, mercy, cheerfully. He's telling him, don't just do it. Do it the right way. Do mm -hmm. it the right heart. Because you know full well you could have somebody, I, I will never, ever forget that I called a place one day that when I was working a job, and she picked up the phone and went, it's a wonderful day at Memphis Drum. How can I help you? <laughs> and I know she was reading the script. They were required to pick up the phone and say, it's a wonderful day. But I could hear it through gritted teeth. I mean, uh -huh. literally, I could tell this. And I'm, I'm going, it's, it's not a wonderful day, is it? <laughs> <laughs> and so we, we, we all have. We can do all these things, but we can do them yeah. in the wrong way, too. And I think there's times where we all have to do something, like, just because we're still trying to do it. You know, just kind of check the box, not with all of our effort or all of our tearfulness, but just because we're trying to check the box. And the difference is between answering the phone at work and reading your script, or when we were in Salt Lake, we went through a drive through and the lady went, what can I get you today? <laughs> on the speaker, and we audibly laughed. And we were like, we can't laugh at her on the speaker. Anyway, <laughs> like there is times where our jobs and our just normal life it's, we're just barely checking the box, right? And the, what Paul is pointing out here, the difference is, is he's like, there may be times when you just want to check the box, but make sure you're using your gift with your passion fully. Those are all working together. Another thing is, is you just don't come off, off a line 100 miles an hour either. It's a, it's a process. Yeah. Just like it says back yonder, you know, it's a wee bit. Every, every day, do a bit more. You know, every day, do a bit better. It's a, it's a lifetime thing, you know. So don't expect to, to go out there and, and like I said, off the, off the line 100 miles an hour because it ain't going to happen. Yeah. You know, don't, don't, get, don't get discouraged. You know, I think you're, you're nothing, not going to ever be able to do it. Just don't give it away. Dennis, did you have one? And then we'll go over to you, Henri. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, 
I, I think the faith was made of many different his faith and her faith. Because uh, there's a, one about, the, you know, uh, uh, there, there are verses that talk about uh, according to his faith. And so it doesn't mean that this set of instructions and ideas and isms is going to be received or utilized by every Christian the same. Or, you know, or we wouldn't have Corinthians telling us about 50 different gifts, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so there are a lot of personal faiths within Christianity, it being, quote, the faith. And it is the faith when you compare it against Buddhism or Shintoism or worshiping the mm -hmm. moon god or whatever. <laughs> it is the faith that leads to life and godliness and eternal life and all that. But within the faith, we have brothers of little faith and brothers of great faith, and we're not supposed to make the one stumble and this and that. So how, if there's such a thing as his faith or her faith, but there's only one B, how can they be different or even in different proportions? Right. There's like two definitions here is what uh, Dennis is saying, and there's the faith, and that's an, a fine thing to say is because this is the faith that leads to God. Okay, that's righteous. That's fine to say. But there's also, everyone has their own faith. Some are small and big and growing and walking. We're all developing our faith for the rest of our lives, right? And so there, you can't say, this is one thing we all fit into. I like that. I like that thought, even though it's kind of got two definitions, right? At least. At least, right? <laughs> At least. Brenda? Mm -hmm. And one time, me and another lab person went to draw a patient, draw the blood from a patient. And the patient said, you're a Christian, Brenda, but the other lady was not a, he, they said she was not a Christian, and she got offended. But people, the world sees. We may not understand. We teach more for our, our life than we do for our works. And people... People do all these works and then they get offended because they don't recognize that they're not doing it for love. Mm -hmm. And people know when it's the works are being done out of love or just out of duty or just to show that I'm better than anybody else. Well, here, let me read the next verse and we'll talk about your comment. Because I don't think these are separated by headings in your Bible. Verse 9. I think these are all connected. Verse 9. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. I had to make sure I read that word right, too, because I could have said arbor what is evil. That means the exact opposite. <laughs> so what is this next verse saying? It's saying what, what Brenda was saying right there. She's saying we have the gifts, but we always think that it's the works and the progress and the big achievements that make people see our faith. But she's saying it's our lives that make us see our the, let people see our faith. And that's what Paul's saying here too. Use your gifts and let your love be genuine. Turn against evil and hold fast to what is good. Doesn't that go back to preach a sermon every day and use words as a pastor? Yeah, absolutely. That's a good way to say that, right? So we, we kind of get stuck on this though sometimes. We will read it and we'll say, yeah, I agree with that. But we've talked about it in a few different ways here. You know, my example about buying the Mountain Dew is a worship to God. Buying the Mountain Dew should be showing people the love of God as well. And I know there's a lot of meaningless things we do in our day, but they're not meaningless if we truly follow Christ and we want to radiate his love and we want to shun what is evil and do what is good. Hold fast to that. So our entire lives, more than just worship, our entire lives is the sermon, is the evangelism. If we're really doing it right. Now that's challenging, right? Challenging. What's that, Courtney? That's a lot harder. Yeah. Than just showing up on Sunday and maybe doing your own good work or doing your own physical act or doing that thing, and then going and doing whatever you want, you know. So, and to tie this all back together, it was just a few verses ago when we were talking about discernment and judging. 
And now let's go back and talk about discernment on ourselves. If there's anything in our lives that is not just radiating love genuinely, if there's anything that just maybe uh, dwells a little bit with evil or something that's uh, not loving on good, then we should maybe discern that out of our lives. We should maybe say, huh, this is not an all-day worship. This is not me radiating Christ. That's tough because everybody in this room, I'm going to tell you right now, you have something. Everyone has something that is not perfectly the love of Christ in their daily lives. <laughs> yeah. And so I think we will always be fighting something, or maybe we'll just be aware of the new thing once we get rid of the last thing. But that doesn't mean we can just stop. We can just stop on this one, because if I stop on this one, I don't have to worry about the rest. No. It's a process. It's a process. You can't stop the process because one's too hard. Because one is brewing a little evil, and you just let that one be. That one will be okay. No. Oh, there's a little dog poop in the ground. You can see just a little. Just a tiny little bit. Yeah. We should talk about that. Just a tiny bit of dog poop. I don't know how much. All right. Let's talk about how we should live our lives as worship some more. Let's keep reading. I'm not going to acknowledge your dog poop combo. <laughs> Verse 10. So let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Verse 10. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation and be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless them and do not curse them. Larry's looking at me, so I gotta stop. I'm curious about one of the words that you just read about outdo one another. Mine doesn't even say the same one. That would be verse 10, the middle of verse 10. What does your guys' version say? Uh, honor one another above yourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And honor giving preference to one another. Mm -hmm. talk about preference. You have a different <laughs> than either of those two? Preference. Well, yeah. So Philippi, uh, Philippians says that to yep. honor others, to, to uh, others more important than yourself. What struck me is the word outdo just infers competition. Well, um, I was, let me go ahead and, so we have, yours has placed preference on others. Um, we had, what did yours have, Nancy? Yours was different than that. And honor giving preference to one Okay. Okay, so if we have preference and we have outdo, I think those can still mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say that's a jump. I'm saying this verse here is saying, put the others above you. So Larry's saying outdo is like a competition. Well, if the competition is always being the one that's underneath the next one, it's putting preference to the next one. So I don't have... Outdo, outdo in our, our, our society means Go beyond them. Mm -hmm. Above and beyond, kind of. That can mean two things. Well, I mean, think about a husband and wife trying to outdo loving each other. That'd be a pretty good marriage. Yeah. I don't think that would be a competition that would be uh, bad, right? I, I guess we kind of do have two definitions of this word in our culture. What Larry's saying, which is like what Gloria and Brenda are doing back there. And then there's also, you know, this was used uh, quite often. I, maybe it's made me the perfectionist that I am today. Try and outdo yourself to be better next time. Uh, so outdo the work you've already done. I can see somebody doing that and going, nah, 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 nah. Or, <laughs> yeah, that's outdoing the wrong way. I'm more humble than you were. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But also it just is that idea of bringing it above the next level, right? NIV says honor one another above yourselves. Well, that's pretty straightforward, isn't it? NIV, we don't love them for much, but we love them for some. I actually have a note on that verse, too, that says we need to loosen the burden of expectation on others. Ooh. So rather than just our, our 
attitude about ourselves in this one of honoring someone else, one of the ways we can honor them is by not having unreal expectations. Mm. Um, I've been in a lot of congregations with people that when the preacher makes a mistake, they're out of there. Because, they, you know, they consider the fact that the preacher is the preacher, and he's not supposed to screw up and make mistakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and just so we all know, our church policy is that that's okay. He'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You go. Like <laughs> well, we stopped here in verse 14, 15. We read through 14. Um, so I'll just talk about this a little bit more here. We're talking about how to live your life as worship, how to be loving in the way you, and then in the way you live. And then there's some more details about that, right? Some ways to do that. How to live love. Uh, do one another in showing honor or do more than, right? Don't be slothful in zeal. <coughs> what is that saying? Be passionate about it. Don't just be like, oh, whatever. Kind of I mean, yeah, slothful and zeal are like the opposite of each yeah. other, aren't they? Be fervent in spirit. So again, kind of the same thing. Be on fire. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be hopeful. Be patient in tribulation. Oh, that one's harder. Be patient when the hard times come. And then be constant in prayer and contribute to the needs of the saints. Show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. So as far as we read, there's a bunch of ways that we can live this love. Bless those that persecute us. Love our brothers and sisters. Be patient. Be hopeful. Rejoice in the Lord always. That's how we can live love as worship. All right, let's keep reading here. We'll read through the end, unless Larry gives me another look. He had given me a look a few verses back. I'm like, I don't know where to stop. All right, verse 15, 15 through 21. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly and never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Oh, yeah. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. The rest of the hard one. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Nine, nine through twenty-one should be, I guess, you could put it as a Christian creed. Or more accurate. How we ought to be. How we ought to be. Not as we always are, because there's some that are really hard there, right, Terry? Actually, that's funny because you were talking about which ones were hard, and I would have said that fifteen, uh, the first half of fifteen, is one of the hardest, because it says rejoice with those who rejoice. And Sure. <laughs> well, when it's people that you don't like, that good things have happened to. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. And then the, the last half of that verse is hard too, because this is a problem we have. Or so maybe not all of us have. Courtney knows I have this problem. If you're upset, I want to help you. You know what this verse doesn't say? Help those persons who are weeping to rejoice. It says, weep with those who weep. And then you go back to what Terry said. Rejoice with those rejoice. Whether or not you like what they have done, whether or not they're rejoicing over something you think is dumb, or they're rejoicing and you don't even like them. Yeah. Well, and I think this one can apply to more than just those in our body, right? Weep with those who weep, rejoice with those who rejoice. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that was 15. Where was the one you said was hard, Larry? Because all of these are hard. <laughs> Second half of 17. So, yeah, 17 really in itself. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. Verse 18, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. I think those ones are really connected there. Again, we as humans want to repay evil for evil. We want to get even. That's what we call that. 
fair. Fair is the terminology we use. Not fair, but what is honorable in the sight of all. When I read into that a little bit, I think, what is honorable in the sight of all? Not being fair sometimes. Sometimes taking the beating so it's honorable to others. What about those bottles of people that pass away in the cell phone? Mm-hmm. There's a big part of it. Well, that's the very next verse, right, Craig? If possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. What is not escalating something and keeping it all right, a peace, peaceably, Courtney? Karen, no offense. That was so rude. Just so you all know, Courtney did get her wedding deposit for the venue back almost one year later. <laughs> but yeah, she avenges herself. Well, it is what this verse is talking about, though, right? It's not being peaceable with all if you're if you're just letting it bug you, that you bug them, and that, it's just saying, it is saying, you can take the beating. It's all right. You don't have to make it even. And then this last little bit, I'm sure we'll have to talk about it a little more next week, because we're way out of time. But if you have some thoughts on it, we go from talking about what we should be doing and how we should just be letting people be peaceful with us, then we go into vengeance. So we'll talk about that next week, but it says, vengeance is the Lord. He will be the one that reaps the coals on the head. So think about what you think that means. And I don't have an answer. Maybe I'll have one by then, but it might not be right. Nancy, last comment. Absolutely. So next week, Romans 13, but we'll talk about the end. God is the just God. And we will agree with everything he does. Well, we should. We will know. We know we win in the end. <laughs> All right, guys. We are out of time. We will talk about that a little bit more next week and move into 13. Thank you so much. Sorry for starting late. Broken microphone. So.